The country was really, you know, made its name with the oil and gas industry, and they're really showing it off here. فضلت في البداية نحافظ على تاريخنا البحري لأن عندنا تراث كبير بحري. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Laila Humaira. On this episode, we dive into how water is a central part of Qatari life, whether it's luxury living by the sea or the country's rich maritime heritage that's been steering its strong and steady growth. But first, Adel Halim makes a splash at the newest and largest water park in Qatar with a slick twist. Plenty of high-speed twists, turns and, of course, splashes are on offer at Muriel Water Park. But this isn't just any old water wonderland. The park pays homage to Qatar's history of oil and gas discovery while illustrating its love for the sea. Muriel was conceived by the government as an opportunity to really show off the oil and gas industry. And what they've done here is developed a park that really is influenced by that theme. I've been involved with a lot of parks, a lot of water parks, a lot of theme parks. This is one of the most intensely themed parks that I've ever been seen or been involved with. It's, it's an amazing park. And here, size really does matter. Located on the northern side of Kataifin Island, Mariel is spread across a massive 160,000 square meters. Walking around the grounds, there's a clear, rusty feel, and the park's general manager says that is completely intentional. If you're on an oil site, they pour concrete. They never let it set. So you see tire tracks and footprints. Walk around the park, you see that everywhere. Also, a lot of sites are old. They, get, they have rust everywhere. They've added rust to all these brand new towers here. So from a guy who's run a lot of old parks where you're trying to get rid of the rust, here I see it everywhere, but it, it really helps with the theming. From Oily the mascot to the names on the rides, oil and gas is a central theme running throughout the theme park. There are 69 attractions in total, but none bigger than the iconic Rig 1938, named after Cutler's first oil rig. There are 53 slides spread across six acres here at the Mario Water Park. One of the major highlights is this 85-meter-high water slide built as the tallest in the world. We call it Rig 1938. That is the year where oil petrol has been discovered in Qatar. So it is like a learning history for people who don't know Qatar. Come for some fun in the water, leave with a history lesson. Every square meter has been cleverly designed to embody the foundation of Qatar's economic growth. While exiting the water park, you exit through here. So we have everything with our logo, Muriel Water Park. Muriel's guest experience manager says one of the park's many unique features is the payment method. We have what is called a cashless system. So basically it is a wristband that we provide to the guests inside the loaded with money and inside they can use it since the, the whole park, water park is cashless. Okay, we've got smaller kids bigger kids, uh, the big adult slides the kids can go on, obviously a giant wave pool, and the most expensive water slide in the world is that turning, that's Slideville. Really? That one? That costs about $10 million now if you want to buy one, U.S., so it's, it's quite the attraction. He's referring to Rapid Refinery, the Middle East's first ever hybrid ride, described as part water slide, part Ferris wheel raft adventure where slides rotate instead of remaining fixed. Bill Lentz believes once the park cements itself as a family-friendly entertainment destination, it will not only be an anchor to draw people to Kataifin Island, but also make a big splash for the country's tourism industry. This park is a destination all by itself. It's gonna be a reason families, a lot of families that'll travel through Doha or travel to other places in the world, it's gonna give those families a reason to stop, spend a day or two here and experience this park. And, and that's going to really, it's going to help, I believe, the whole country, you know, from a, from a tourism standpoint. It's really going to make a big difference. Whale sharks, dugongs, mangroves, and corals, just some of the flourishing flora and fauna being preserved by marine conservation in Qatar. Spearheading that mission is Justin Lari, who leads the Department of Marine Wildlife at the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. And I caught up with him here at the National Museum of Qatar to find out how his passion for nature turned into a lifelong professional pursuit. 
Jasim, firstly, can you explain what biodiversity means within the context of Qatar's ecological landscape? In terms of uh, Qatar, of course, biodiversity means simply, in like simple words, all forms of life, micro and macro, uh, flora and fauna. We have certain species that can build a structure, a, you know, physical structure. We, we call it the natural habitat or an ecosystem, and also the associated biota in combating uh, climate change. Now, as you mentioned, Qatar has a number of marine species that are pretty abundant in its waters, with the government efforting many initiatives to preserve these animals. Can you tell us why these animals are so special to Qatar? Qatar, uh, located in a subtropical region, so we have a high species richness, but in terms of abundance, maybe it's not quite so. Although, there are some exceptions, like the whale shark, you know, whale shark in Qatar. Whale sharks, they aggregate in the northeast, and their number can reach up to 600, which is the largest aggregation in the world. So, like an example, because of the importance of a uh, hawksbill sea turtle for the environment and for biodiversity, we initiated uh, a project that goes back to uh, 2003. So we are talking here about more than 20 years in making and hard work to conserve hawksbill because they are critically endangered species. So what's been some of the most surprising findings in your research over the last few years? There is like, I would say, some misconception, uh, Leila, that, you know, the desert environment or harsh environment doesn't sustain biodiversity, right? Is it true? Maybe the, it won't be as, you know, the, in terms of abundance, Abi, similar to tropical, for example, right? But what, what, what has amazed me, really, the, the species richness in Qatar, in the marine environment, mm. we have different families of corals. Mm different species of seagrasses, right? More than uh, 20 uh, species of seabirds, more than uh, 60 species of cartilaginous, uh, you know, fishes, 33 species of sharks. I mean, look at this number, you know, so I've been really amazed of the species richness we have within, you know, the state of Qatar. With more than 560 kilometers of shoreline and serene turquoise waters, Qatar has long been called the Pearl of the Arabian Peninsula. It was from those shores that these magnificent Dao boats sailed for centuries. And while ship designs have rapidly modernized, the country is preserving the art of Dao making to keep the tradition alive. I got to learn more about these special boats that have steered and shaped Qatar's cultural and economic identity over the years. تفضل في البداية نحافظ على تاريخنا البحري لأن عندنا تراث كبير بحري. Ahmed Jassim Al Sayyikh has always been fascinated with Dao boats. It began when he was 14 years old, living close to the shore and surrounded by shipbuilders and seafarers. He's been designing Dao's for nearly three decades now but the significance of the ships goes back centuries. Today, dozens of these boats are still sailing, sprinkled across Qatar's waters, embracing a new life. Instead of pole diving, tourism has now become its main purpose. While the boats may all look similar to some, there are at least five types of Dao boats with slightly different features. Ahmed's workshop also makes miniature models of the boats for gifting and educating. The engineers that construct these Dao boats use centuries-old techniques passed down from generation to generation. Some modern methods of shipbuilding are still applied to improve productivity, but the completion of a Dao boat can take years. And while the work is laborious, all the effort goes into ensuring that the art of Dao making continues even as modernity thrives. اليوم العمال استخدم الدرين الكهربائي المجدح الكهربائي عشان نعمل ثقوب 
والآليات الكبيرة تساعدنا يعني في نقل الأوزان الثقيلة من الخشب. One particular traditional method that Ahmed still uses is the way he chooses the wood that forms the base of the boat. حسب انحناء الشجرة نبحث عنه عشان عروق الشجر يكون ماشي مع الانحناء ولذلك هو قوة الشجرة في اتجاه العروق A strong base is important to build a sturdy ship just like the foundations of Dao making which Ahmed is hoping to nurture in the next generation. في أهداف كثيرة في أن أهداف أن نحن نفتح يعني مدرسة مصغرة التعليم الجيل اللي يبي يتعلم وبعدين هذا الهدف يعني صناعة السفن يعطي أرضية صلبة للي يبي ينطلق إلى السفن الحديثة. And as far as Ahmed is concerned, he hopes to continue preserving his cultural heritage in all shapes and sizes for as long as he can. أحس بفخر لما نشوف الأشياء اللي صممناها وأشرفنا عليها ونزلناها في البحر والشكل الغديم حتى يعني فخر إني حاولت أحافظ عليها طريقة ما بالقدر يعني اللي استطعت. Well, it's clear that Qatar, with its rich maritime history, will continue its connections to the world's major shipping routes, but also attract more tourists to its shores with exhilarating water activities. We hope you've had a splashing time, but we've come to the end of the episode. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.